Hey guys and welcome back to another lesson. So today we're going to be learning how to change the strings on an acoustic guitar. Now not every acoustic is going to be exactly the same so you might have to adapt a little bit to the guitar but most acoustics will be done this way. I would say probably at least 90%. So just to go over what you'll need, obviously you need your guitar. I recommend a pretty clean workspace. Um, if you're going to set it down on like a counter or a table, I recommend putting a towel or uh, they make like guitar work pads. You might want to get a neck stand or something like this to prop the guitar up so that it's not leaning down or putting any pressure in places that you shouldn't. If you don't want to purchase one of these, you can always use a roll of paper towels or toilet paper, something to just, like I said, prop the neck up so that there's not any pressure where there shouldn't be. The uh, next thing that you'll need, but isn't 100% necessary, is gonna be a string winder. This will help us get these strings off the pegs a little bit quicker. This is something you do need. This is the string cutter end of the string winder. So you can usually buy these um, online or in a local music store. I'll go ahead and uh, have links in the description for anything that I'm showing here, or at least something very similar. If you don't have, the, you don't have to have the string winder, you can always do it by hand. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. If you don't want to purchase the cutters, then you can just use uh, standard wire cutters. If your uh, child makes sure that you're uh, having adult supervision or adult help you with that. Uh, next up, I have some fingerboard oil. On acoustic guitars, most of them will have like an ebony or a um, rosewood fingerboard. So you want some like lemon oil or, or preferably uh, fretboard oil. Uh, of course, you're going to need a new set of guitar strings, so here's mine uh, that I prefer to use. Um, if you don't have a preferred brand, then I will again have a link in the uh, description. And then after we change the strings to make sure they're nice and uh, slippery or lubricated, I have some finger ease. I also have a brush over here just in case there's any dirt that I want to get off the guitar in like a, a tight area. but. Um, and then in order to rub in the fretboard oil, I have a old t-shirt here. You can always use a like shop towel. Just make sure whatever it is has nothing on it. It's completely clean. So a microfiber cloth or a shop towel will be fine as long as it is clean. All right, with all that being said, let's get into actually changing the strings. So I'm gonna end up changing all the strings and I'll kind of speed through uh, most of them. But the one string I will show you is gonna be our high E. And the reason I'm gonna do this one is because it's the most fragile string because it's the smallest, meaning it's the easiest break. So we're gonna take our string winder, or if you're not using your string winder, uh, you can use your fingers. And we're gonna hook the open end over the tuning machine over here. And we gotta loosen the string. Okay. So right now, if I'm facing the guitar the way I'm facing it now, this is going uh, counterclockwise. All right, so it's starting to rattle here. All right, so the string's pretty loose. All right, and now I wanna take my uh, wire cutters or my string cutters, if I have the tool, and I'm going to cut towards the sound hole. Now, in order to make sure the string is loose, but to make sure it's not gonna move anywhere that I don't want it to, I'm gonna hold the string down at my 12th fret. Um, you don't have to do the 12th, but just somewhere on the guitar towards the middle. So between like five and 12 is a good area. And then I'm gonna cut it. If I can get it in the hole, there we go. And that's pretty much it. So once I've done that, I can now take this end of the string and just unwrap it from the peg and pull it out. And that's what I'm end up end up with. I have a little bit of a little bit of the string there that was wrapped around the peg. A clean cut on that end. Now this end can be a little tricky. Again, I'm using a, a tool to pull this peg up, right? So the tools don't always work, and most of the time I actually can't get this one to work on this guitar specifically. So the tool is supposed to slide under the peg, uh, or the bridge pin, and pull it up. But if that doesn't work, you can always take your old rag, and the reason I say you want to do this with old rag uh, is these can tend to be sharp. So you're going to slide your hand in and push that pin up. Now in order to do that, if you can't get it out with a, a pin puller, is you're gonna to wanna to take all the strings off first. So let me go ahead and speed up through the process of doing that. Now it's important to note on the three on the top side of the guitar, those are gonna be turned clockwise to loosen instead of counterclockwise. 
Okay, now all my strings are loose. So what I'm gonna do is the same thing that I did before. I'm gonna hold down at the 12th fret. I'm just gonna cut every string towards the center of the sound hole. Okay, and once you cut it, it doesn't matter if you let go. Um, we're just trying to make sure it doesn't fly up and accidentally hit you in the eye or something. And it's important to note, you wanna change your strings probably between one to three months. Um, I typically do it probably about every month. Um, but if you start noticing any dirt buildup on your strings, or especially if you notice any rust, that's when you definitely want to change the strings. So again, just unwrapping all the strings. And now that I have gotten all of those strings off, I'm gonna go ahead and grab them like this. Be careful not to get poked by the sharp ends. I'm just gonna wrap them in a loop so they stay nice and neat together. This is just making it easier for me to get rid of them uh, in a trash bag. So again, if I try to take my string puller or my button puller, it's not really picking up on any of the pins. So what I'm gonna do, like I said, is I take the cloth or my old t-shirt, I'm gonna stick my hands in the sound hole. I'm gonna feel for the bridge pins on the bottom. You'll notice because they stick out quite a bit usually. I'm just gonna push up on those until they start to move. So there's one, I'll take the string out with it. And then it doesn't matter what order they come out in, you can just kind of set them all to the side. But that's generally how it is going to work out. All right, and that is the last string. Okay, so now that we've gotten all of our strings off, we can go ahead and give the body of the guitar a little wipe down. Now, one thing I will tell you is be careful. Typically, your bridge is not going to be glued in or anything. Um, especially on an electric acoustic, it won't be glued in. So if you lift up the guitar or anything to wipe it down, this could fall out. So make note of how, uh, if there are any grooves on it, how the grooves are setting. That way, if it falls out, you can put it back the right way. So again, just giving the guitar a quick wipe down on the body. Nothing crazy here. Uh, then I'm gonna take my lemon oil. I'm just gonna flip it upside down, give it a couple of shakes so that the felt up top gets a little moist. And then I'm going to go through and rub down each fret. So I'll go ahead and speed up through this too. Okay, so once you've gone over uh, every fret spacing and gotten the fretboard um, with the oil, I would go through lightly and just kind of make sure that the oil is covering every part of the fretboard on the top. All right, now I've gone ahead and I've wiped it in on every fret, so I'm good there. And after the guitar is sit for about a minute, uh, you can go through and then just wipe off the remaining oil. Now, when you're wiping it off, you give it a little bit more pressure than when you're wiping it in. Um, of course, the oil will still show up and seep out a little bit over the first, like, probably a week or so, but it's not gonna be a big deal. It doesn't harm anything. It doesn't ruin the strings. It's just there to hydrate the wood. And most of the time, this stuff is just mineral water and, uh, like, lemon, so. That's perfectly okay, not gonna damage anything. All right, so that takes care of the cleaning and getting the strings off. So now we wanna take our new strings out. Now the ones I use are by Diodario, but you know, no matter who you use, usually there's a chart on the back of the strings, similar to this one, which will tell you which string is which. Diodario colors the uh, strings to tell you which string is which, which is very uh, handy, and they group them in twos. So the thickest two would be E and A, the next thickest or the medium would be D and G, and then the thinnest would be B and high E. So I'm gonna start uh, going from my thickest. I'm just gonna unwrap the strings from each other. Okay, pretty simple. And I'm gonna set them down and take the biggest one. So for me, the biggest one is the gold tip. Okay, and then what I need to do is take my bridge pin and take my uh, ball end of the string. And I'm gonna put the ball end of the string in the matching hole for that string slot. So this would be the E. And I'm gonna take the groove, which you can see on my bridge pin here. I'm gonna face it towards the string. And as I pull the string up, I'm gonna push that bridge pin down. And this makes sure that the bridge pin isn't sitting on top of the ball, but instead the ball is going in front of the bridge pin through that groove. 
and this will make sure the string stays tight. Now, when you're tuning up the guitar, you might find that it wasn't as tight as it could be. It's really hard to get it all the way with just pulling up and pushing down. But just tune slowly and hold the pin down while you're, or you know, tighten the string slowly and hold the pin down while you're tightening the string. And usually if it slips or anything, you can just push it back down and it'll be fine. But that way it doesn't fly out. We're gonna take the string and we wanna line the peg hole with the nut. So I've gone ahead and done that. I'm gonna feed my string through the peg hole. I'm gonna pull it tight. Okay, so it's not super tight, but I'm pulling it tight and then I wanna give it slack. You don't wanna just go straight from here and start uh, tightening it. So the little bit of slack I'm gonna give it is, uh, is I'm just gonna pull up and put my finger on the first, uh, or I'm sorry, the fifth fret and just give it about that much slack. And then what I usually do is I skip down a fret for the A string and then I skip down another fret for the D string. And then for G, first fret, slack, for B, third fret slack, and for high E, it's fifth fret slack. That way the slack kind of compensates as we go through the guitar. So right there, I'm just gonna pinch at the nut once I get the slack I want, and I'm gonna bend the string up at the peg. Now the string might wanna slide back and forth even though you bent it, that's okay. Just try not to let it slide too much, that way we keep the proper slack. And now we're gonna turn uh, on the top side, we would go counterclockwise, and we wanna keep pinching down at the nut to make sure the string holds tight. And then once it wraps around, maybe once or twice, so I'm at one wrap now, going on the second, it'll start to tighten up and you don't have to hold nearly as, as hard at the nut. You can kind of let go and just finish tightening the string. Okay, I'm not gonna tune it right now, but I have it where I want it. I'm gonna pull the string up again to make sure it's, it's not like flopping around or anything. And then I'm gonna cut off all but maybe maybe about an inch or two. And that way, um, cause we're gonna stretch the strings later, that way if I'm stretching the string and it slips at all, we do have a little bit extra on this end. Okay, and I'm gonna repeat that process. I'll speed it up for you guys uh, for the next two strings and then I'll go over the uh, G string with you and then speed up the process for the B and high E. So, enjoy. Now I can go ahead and move on to the G string. So the reason I want to do the G string uh, for you is because when we get to the other side of the neck, it is a little different, um, just because we have to turn the peg the opposite direction. So before we're going counterclockwise to tighten, now we have to go clockwise. So again, everything's the same. I push my pin down, I pull the string up. If I'm not certain that that pin is down, I hold it while I tighten the string, or at least once I get to uh, to like the edge of where it's starting to get a little snug. So when the string's loose, it's not a big deal, but towards the end when you start feeling the string tighten up and make sound, that's when you wanna hold that pin. Okay, so again, I give it a uh, first fret bit of slack, pinch of the nut, bend up, but now I have to go clockwise. And yeah, that's pretty much the only difference. And I'm gonna follow this pattern for the B and the high E string. Now the B and high E string typically are a little bit more difficult just because they don't have what we call a wrap. So you notice that those strings are usually just kind of a nickel or silver color. And that means that they don't have any bronze or phosphor wrap on them. And the string doesn't grip as easily. So when you're doing those, it's harder to get a tight wrap around here. So just practice a little bit. Um, maybe buy yourself two or three sets of strings to start off with. The, uh, the ones I'm going to recommend come packed with three, but that way if you end up messing something up and you have to redo it, um, you do have spares. If you do end up getting a loose wrap, it's not that like bad. Uh, just keep an eye on it. Usually if the first wrap's a little loose or sticking out, it's fine. Um, but if it's all like jig-jagged or, or crisscrossed all over each other, then you might want to change it. Um, it's also important to know that your wraps don't have to be this way, but in order to make it easy to get the strings off, as well as uh, helping keep tuning stability uh, done well, I do recommend making sure each wrap goes underneath the first one so everything just kind of spirals down. 
All right, so I'm gonna speed up through the process while I finish up the last two strings. Okay, so I've gotten all my strings on the guitar and I've gotten all of them trimmed to about, like I said, one to two inches left on the ends. So now I would typically tune up my guitar, um, but I'm not gonna show you that because I have a whole video on that uh, for you guys. But what I would do after tuning it up is pull on each string and just lightly. So I pull it till it's, it starts resisting a little bit and then I pull up just a little bit past that and this is gonna stretch out the strings so that even though they're new, because strings will stretch when you know they're brand new, even though they're new, hopefully they'll hold tune a little bit better. So I would probably tune my guitar and do this about a dozen times, and then hopefully the guitar will stay in pretty well tuned. And then once I have done that, I go through with my wire cutters or my string snips, and I just cut the uh, little bit of the end sticking off as much as I can. So leave it as close to the actual tuning peg itself. And then after all of this is done to make sure the strings stay hydrated and new feeling, I go ahead and spray it with some of the Finger Ease lubricant. They make other lubricants too, but this is the one that I would recommend. And then once you do that, I usually just take a cloth or a towel and wipe the strings down once over with that. Thank you so much guys for watching this lesson. I hope it was helpful. I know it's a little different than like a playing lesson or like a theory lesson, but it's definitely very important that you know how to take care of your guitar. Thank you again so much and I'll see you in the next lesson.